Hey guys, how's it going? Car here with another Raid Shot Legends video. Wait, hey, I'm down here. Actually, I'm done. All right. Well, hey guys, how's it going? Car here with another Raid Shot Legends video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a champion review on Valkyrie. So let's get into it. All right. So, what makes Valkyrie so good is, first of all, she's a counter attack character. And there's only three characters in the game that could do that. Two of them is actually the entire team, whereas Skullcrusher, it's just all allies except for him. May get slept on unless you saw a gameplay of her or actually used her yourself is just how big the shield is. The shield is like awesome. Uh, it takes a lot of damage. Big shield is one of the best shields in the game, if not the best. There might be some characters that better ones. That and combined with counterattack is insane. It's crazy that just one move makes her one of, if not the best character in the game. She's great in every facet of the game, every dungeon, every uh, clan boss. Just whatever piece of the game you want, she's going to be an S plus or S tier character at the least. First, I want to talk about masteries because I think the masteries can vary pretty significantly now that there's been a lot of kind of meta changes in the arena potentially. Also with uh, Platinum Arena coming out, we're going to really start to get tested on just how like what the true top tier meta is. So I kind of want to cover some of the changes there with your masteries. But first, let's talk about Clan Boss masters because this is probably the thing that most people are going to care about when using her i would say these are the best for a clan boss like speed tuned character for uh, using counter attack it's going to be you just uh, very simply go down the offense side for war master on the left because she has a two hit a one defense is going to definitely be better than support when it comes to you know maximizing your clan boss utility and damage and the the two there's like two to three masteries that are very important here which is resurgent where you have a 50% chance to remove one random debuff from this champion when they lose 25% on their max HP from a single enemy skill. And then also you have Retribution over here where it has a 50% chance to counterattack when this champion loses 25% of their max HP or more from a single enemy skill. So sometimes she could get punched or way later on in the fight when the AoEs start to really pile up in damage. In Clan Boss, having that ability where she takes a ton of damage, she could either get punched, cleanse it, and counterattack to give her more... Uh, sustained if you have lifestyle gear on her you can if she gets punched she can cleanse it and counterattack to give more sustain or if she just takes a lot of damage from like an aoe she can still counterattack and sustain get out of jail free cards from just masteries alone and then also has this has a 20 percent chance to counterattack an enemy while they apply a stun sleep or freeze debuff to an ally which is very cool because like let's say someone else on your team is designed to take the punch like for example in my team tyrell takes the punch for the clan boss, uh, she has a 20% chance to counterattack off that, which is going to get more sustain and also just a little bit more damage, which is a nice thing to have since all the other choices are, are pretty suboptimal. And so how I gear her, uh, currently it's in lifestyle gear. Pretty much it's just all defense. It's, you know, defense. It, it Okay, so first it's enough speed. If you see here, she has 194 speed, which the, the Ultra Nightmare clan boss is, uh, he has 190 Whereas if you're on Nightmare, it, he has 170, so you just want a little bit more than the clan boss, so you make sure you go before him. But you do want to be the slowest on your team with the counterattacker because you don't want the counterattack to wear off um, faster. Because if she, you know, it's pretty pretty obvious. So she's the slowest on my team. Life still set, so she could sustain later on in the fight with her procking War Master, and then just and then after that, just a ton of defense. A couple key things though is if you're running her in arena, that'd be different. Like if you really cared about arena, I would say accuracy and resistance are gonna make a big difference. Like you know, more speed for sure. I would say accuracy and resistance are gonna come a pretty key in arena, especially with how the meta is trending for all these really high accuracy and high resist teams. Um, being able to make sure your buffs stay on with high resist would be really cool. Also, making sure your turn meter reduction actually lands when she counterattacks, especially in arena, is going to be a big deal. So, if you can, I would say try to get to three, three to um, three hundred to four hundred resistance, and also two, two hundred all the up to four hundred uh, accuracy, depending on, um, you know, just how how high of a power level you're facing in arena. Um, and also, too, I would say the masteries would change drastically for Arena. If I wanted, if like, let's say I had another Valkyrie, I would have either, I, I would, I probably wouldn't even have my masteries in offense because I don't really care how much she, how hard she hits. I would have a support defense setup where I go down to at least here on defense and either take this fit, plus 50 resist or I would go all the way down in the support tree and get the plus 50 in accuracy. And I would just kind of mix and match depending on how my gear is, what I'm going for um may, like i've been trying some high resist comps and i think it's awesome being just watching all these moves that would typically 
be a really big deal, just get resisted. So um, just keep that in mind as uh, you know, as more and more people start getting better gear, that these super high resist comps could be a thing. And I think Valkyrie would be a super top tier character for a team like that. But I'm not going to, me personally, I'm not going to change all my tuned for Ultra Nightmare Clan boss just to make sure she's good in Arena. Um, you know, if I find other characters, uh, you know, if I ever change her out of my Ultra Nightmare Clan boss, he might, might consider it, but that's not going to be for a while. All right, guys. Well, with that, let's get into some gameplay and I'll kind of show you how she works in Clan boss. Okay, so here's my current clan boss team here. The important thing to keep in mind is with running counter tech is you want to make sure that every single other character in your team has a good effect on their A1. So as you can see on the team I built here, you got Foley, he has defense on his A1. You got Tyrell that has attack down on his A1. You got poisons coming out of a cult brawler. And you got poisons also coming out of the uh, of the A1 of Steel Skull. Keeping that in mind is going to make sure you're really taking full advantage of counterattack because if you don't have characters that are abusing the fact that you're going to be autoing a lot more, uh, it's really, you're not going to get counterattack. It's still going to be great, but it's not going to be as good as it potentially could be. All right, so let's see some gameplay of Valkyrie. And big thing to keep in mind is you, we're going to show, big thing is just to have her speed tune correctly. Super straightforward. Once you actually get her in here, just going to make sure put the counterattack up first and you're good to go. And everything... It's going to really help your survivability, not only in the sense of her shield, but in making the run significantly more consistent Is uh, with the apply rates on not only your attack down, but your defense down as well, depending on how your team is based. If you have uh, characters with poisons on their A1, like Steel Skull, like Nethril, stuff like that, it's really going to improve their consistency rates on their damage as well. Also, like boost their damage numbers up if, you're, if you didn't have a counter attack character before. So... Just, just really awesome. It's just overall a really good ability. And the only things that probably don't synergize well with this is if you have, you can't wear relentless gear. Characters like actually like a cold brother that attack, like go twice. It's probably a good idea to not use that move because you're just going to waste the counterattack opportunity and also decrease the the shield timing on it too. So it could really impact survivability. So the, there is some things that have anti synergy with. Um, counterattack characters just to keep in mind that they're not just the end-all be-all but for the most part it's it's the best ability in the game also another thing i wanted to highlight is it just really shows like when i see these two characters here i see steel skull and i see valkyrie it really highlights just how much better having a three turn cooldown is versus a four turn uh, especially when it comes to survivability in the clan boss because having the three turn cooldown guarantees that i can have it during both aoe's which are most damage that he does he like he hits a lot harder during those phases whereas if i had this four turn if this was on a four turn not only it would you would always stagger it you would never have it on time for both aoe's if you tried to have it prepared whereas for example steel skull his is on a four turn cooldown here so i can never reliably have defense down for both the parts of the encounter that do the most damage so it just really shows that Make sure when you're looking for a defense down character, Steel Skull is just a good hybrid where he does good damage and has a defense defense up ability. But ideally, I would have a character that has defense up uh, for th on a three turn cooldown versus a four turn. Examples would be like Grizzle Jarl or Altan. Altan would be like a top tier character in, in place of Tyrell. So just keep that in mind, just how, how much more beneficial that one extra turn of cooldown reduction is on a move. I think that highlights it well. So with that, I think let's get into some dungeons. I think that pretty much shows just how good the shield is, shows how kind of the, the encounter would work out if you had counterattack, the benefits of it. But let's let's see how she fares in some dungeons. Okay, so here she is in Dragon 20. Some some cool things you're gonna gain benefits of with her kit that you don't necessarily get in Clan Boss are going to be her she's gonna be able to use her passive more. Whereas, like, for example, when he goes, see how her jealousy passive procs uh, and gives her more turn meter, which is kind of nice. Other thing, too, is that characters are a lot slower in dungeons. So you you run the risk if you have really good gear and really fast characters that she might mistime, the, like, characters might mistime the shield or might mistime their counterattack because um, you're just going so fast, you're going to run out of the turns. So that's why in these scenarios where you're killing mobs, or like killing these kind of trash waves, I recommend uh, debuffs are significantly better than buffs um, because they're just so much more reliable. Once they apply, like you, they have to go. 
So just kind of something that I th- think is interesting to take take into consideration the faster and better your gear gets. Uh, and so uh, you see a couple of the hits that happen. Uh, her, her shield just barely breaks. Just kind of cool because when I first got to this encounter, I didn't have Valkyrie. And I was like, wow, they just hit so hard. And then just to see... They're that same move, like not even break the shield. Just for example, like that used to, if that happened to my Royal Guard, for example, that would just take like half his life. So it's just kind of crazy to see the difference um, of just this one shield makes. I think that highlights it well here. And then what's kind of cool about Dragon, especially like Dragon 20, is that it's very similar to a clan boss fight it's just like an easier clan boss fight so like the same thing applies like so that's a good way to show just how much damage is actually happening to my arbiter you see her just get chunked there whereas when she has the shield up so she's just dead whereas if she had the shield you wouldn't even see it uh get chipped down but now let's still be able to finish it out just kind of a, a cool thing uh if my arbiter was booked probably having the extra speed would have helped there but you know i haven't really put too much into her and well, we'll just close out this fight here with the dragon. Kind of see, like, so this is just kind of nice having the shield buff to make sure you don't, you know, die to his his breath if you can't proc his damage fast enough. But other than that, also again, very straightforward. A couple, a couple little things here and there are kind of cool to see. Just like the the shield doesn't even get phased. Uh, just essentially, you're very safe when you have it on. Been saying that a lot, but. It's just kind of cool to see actually see it in action. I was very surprised. It's not only good, it's just very good. A little extra damage with the counter attack here. And then uh, a cool brawler just did the thing I would I would not do, which is you know do the double move when he had counter attack on. And so now you see him run out of shield a turn earlier, didn't get a counter attack up. So definitely makes a big difference. And like the relentless gear would be the same thing. Other characters that go twice would be the same thing that would have anti synergy with Valkyrie. And all right, and then this should wrap it up. And then lastly, I wanted to get into arena and let's see if we got anything good. Ooh, oh, speed. Hey, six star with speed. So we'll, let's run some arena matches. Currently, I'm running a like a high resisting, got a high resistance on Ignatius and Rash Card over here. Got a like a stun set over on Kaimar. And then just my typical, like, same, same gear you saw for my Valkyrie. And I really like this. I think. If I really want to optimize this team for uh, arena, I'd probably have Rosin in place of Rosin in place of Kaimar, and then I would have her in like high resist, high accuracy gear, and that would make the team a lot better. But currently, I don't want to you know, move gear around off her to, just for arena, like especially a slow, slow team. It's just it, uh, kind of a fun thing to try. I think high resist is very good. I think it's worth like you know giving it a shot if you have the characters for it. Like it takes very specific characters for it, but I think Valkyrie is a character that would excel in this type of comp. So here, let's just run a couple matches, see how good she is. Um, her passive is awesome for Arena. As you can see here, she goes first because there's this. she has the shield buff here. Um, she'll actually gain turn meter off that, which I think is really cool. Uh, she's going to gain like turn meter off any any buffs, you know, regardless. So like the 10% r- really comes up clutch in Arena. Her shield's awesome in Arena. Counter is obviously really good. Just... In, in every part of the game, little arena, it's hard to show her specifically being the reason why these are are. You can obviously get what her contribution is, and it's good. It's a good contribution. So we got turn reduction there. We got you know it, she also synergizes really well with Kaimar, but like who doesn't? It's just having the big shield twice during a match is going to be awesome. It's a short cooldown anyway, so it might happen twice in a, in a normal match. But this comp is mainly going to be about you know beating these kind of. Like nuker teams. Okay, let's try for this team. See if we can beat this team. That other team down there was like 195k power. It was a lo- grinder, but we won. And here we go. We and here. Let's see. Let's see if we can get another arena match that highlights. Um, I'm just trying to go to the bottom. Like that's usually the better better teams are at the bottom. So let's just go here. Let's uh, again went first. Cool thing here too is that she gains the 10 percent. She notice how she keeps going is because first of all, there's tons of buffs there, but in the beginning they had the shield buffs, and those shield buffs actually give her the 10% turn meter um, boost off her passive, which is awesome. It's super good. Dog gonna counter attack here. I'm gonna use Kaimar when he finally decides to go to cleanse all the buffs, and we should be able to win here. That that's a cool thing about Kaimar with stun set. You get stuns like that, kind of nice. So here, let's see if we can cleanse them off. 
And so he obviously doesn't have high resistance because they all worked. And uh, let's go for this guy. Yeah. And this should be a W here. Provokes nice too. It's essentially like a stun. Most people don't have really good A1s, especially in Arena. They're trying to use way better moves than that. And then let's kill this guy. This is going to just take it for forever. But I think this has proven just how good Valkyrie is. She's even the, she's a lot faster than than her gear would allow her to be because that 10%, especially in Arena, especially with how the meta goes, that 10% off her passive is just awesome. Here, I'll show the tooltip for it. It's uh, this champion's turn meter will increase by 10% each time an enemy champion places a buff. Enemy champions will have their turn meters decreased by 10% for each buff they receive. So not only is it increasing her speed, but it's decreasing there. So it's, it's just very, it's so impactful for Arena. It's just awesome. So that, especially for Arena, you're really going to want to make sure her accuracy is, is high because you want that to land well. Also, uh, her, her A1 needs to land too. But for I have her tuned for Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss, and that doesn't do anything for there, so I couldn't care less. But eventually, maybe I'll make her an Arena character and actually bump up her accuracy. That should do it for my champion review of Valkyrie. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to all you guys. You guys have been super supportive. I've been a lot more subs. It's been really cool. Been seeing all the support. It's been really encouraging and really nice. So I just want to say a big thank you there. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And peace.